Hello, my name is Ed Roth. I'm the Central Mass Director of the SHINE program, and I'd like to welcome you to our Medicare and More program for, for this month. And hi, my name is Carrie Faria. I'm the Assistant Director for the Central Mass SHINE program, and welcome back to Medicare and More. Folks, today I thought that we'd talk a little bit about, uh, about Medicare and, and how it works. Uh, in the upcoming months, it's going to get a little hectic. We call it the kind of the crazy time at the SHINE program because we, we experience Medicare open enrollment and, and uh, the ability for folks to change, change your uh, plans and, and, and stuff like that. So we want to be sure that everybody understands Medicare a little bit and, and what it's all about. Uh, Medicare began in 1965. It, was, it, was, it came into inception under President Johnson and uh, he signed the Medicare law in 1965 and to, to get into Medicare, you enroll through the Social Security Administration. And Medicare is then administrated <coughs> by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS as we call it. Now, who can get Medicare? If you turn the age 65, you're eligible for Medicare, okay? Once you're 65, you're eligible for Medicare. Also, folks that are disabled under 65 can get Medicare also. So if you're disabled <coughs> under 65, you can get Medicare. And, and what are some of the components of Medicare, Carrie? Well, Medicare has basically four different parts to it. There's Medicare A, which is what is used when somebody's an inpatient hospital stay. There's Medicare B, which is doctor's visits, outpatient visits, physical therapy, blood draws, things like that. There is Medicare C, which is a combination of Medicare A and B benefits um, and extra insurance and drugs. So Medicare C are what are called Medicare Advantage plans. So those are plans, they're HMOs, PPOs, so there's a variety of plans uh, available. So those are insurance packages, so to speak. And then there's Medicare D, which is the Medicare prescription drug plan. So those are the four basic components to Medicare. And what kind of coverage does Medicare provide normally to folks? Medicare provides coverage for 80% uh, of a person's medical expenses. So if you have both A and B, then 80% of your medical will be covered, whether or not you're in the hospital, whether or not you're doing outpatient. So that part's good. And you might need something else in addition to that to help you pay for the 20%. But we'll talk about that a little further on, I'm sure. Yeah, Medicare does have premiums and deductibles and co-payments. And and you can also get help with that through uh, retiree coverage, Medigap coverage, or what we, we call Medicare Advantage plans or Medicare Part C. Now those types of plans are something similar to what you have in the, uh, in the corporate sector like your HMOs and PPOs. And you can also get help, help through veterans, veterans agencies like TRICARE. So all of those uh, organizations will help you with those Medicare payments and deductibles. Now, how would one enroll in Medicare? What is the process? First of all, it's the Social Security Administration that's responsible for signing a person up for Medicare. And a lot of people would think, well, why can't they just go to Medicare for that? And the reason being is that Social Security actually takes into account somebody's work history. So they need to look at that first before they sign a person up for Medicare. So you need to call Social Security to get your Medicare started. Yeah, you need to call Social Security, and, and it's, it's very, very important that you do that right around your 65th birthday. Uh, you got to clearly remember that, that uh, Medicare, the Medicare program and, and the process of collecting Social Security benefits uh, at a later age, you may be 65, and uh, you're saying, well, I don't, I'm not going to call Social Security until I'm 67, figuring that... Uh, uh, 66, figuring that that's when you'll be collecting your full benefits and Medicare would be part of that. Part of that. That's not the case. Uh, the fact is that Medicare is a completely separate program and, and, and the Medicare wants to be sure that you sign up at 65 and, and, and call Social Security to do that. You can always call Social Security back to collect your, start collecting your benefits and a lot of folks are doing it at 66. Some folks may be doing it at 67. Now, one, one little difference in that, if you're already collecting Social Security benefits, say if benefits, if you're collecting Social Security benefits at 62, if that's happening, 
Medic uh, Social Security will send you a Medicare card in the mail prior to your 65th birthday. So it, it, that's like an automatic enrollment, okay? That's what we call that, an automatic enrollment. So if you're collecting Social Security benefits, you'll get your Social Security card in the mail. Now, if you're not collecting Social Security benefits, you have to actively call Social Security. And there's a time frame that we recommend that you do that and when you can do that. And, and it's, it's very important. You don't want to get into the trap of thinking that you, you don't have to call Social Security or they'll send it automatic because your friend got it automatically. Not the case. Your friend probably got it automatically because they are collecting Social Security benefits prior to the age 65. So that's one thing we want to caution everybody on because it's very important because uh, you don't want to receive a penalty. And you could receive a penalty and your Medicare enrollment could be delayed if you don't sign up before 65 or at least contact uh, Social Security to, to let them know you're turning 65 and explain your situation to them. You may not have to get Part B, but you do have to contact them. It's, it's very important. And, and there's a time frame that, you, that we use, and Kerry can maybe explain that, that. Let's say your birthday is July 4th. And, and when would you want to probably contact Medicare, Kerry? Well, when you, let's say your birthday's in July. So you have a seven month window around the month of your birthday to enroll into Medicare. So how they break that up is that's three months prior to the month of your birthday the month of your birthday and then three months after the month of your birthday. So that's the time frame in which when you're turning 65 and you want to take Medicare that you would want to call the Social Security Administration. So if you want your Medicare to start directly on let's say July 1st because that's the month of your birthday you really ought to be calling Social Security Administration in the first three months prior to your birthday so the start date for your Medicare would be on July 1. So if you prolong and you wait and let's say you call Social Security in July, well then your coverage isn't going to start until later. Same thing with those three months after the fact, after your birthday, the later you wait, the longer that delay time is going to be for your Medicare to start. So that's really the time frame, if you're turning 65 and if you want to take Medicare at that time, that you really ought to be making a move. But it is a little bit different when you're employed and you want to continue working after person 65. Correct. If you're employed and you want to continue to work after 65, you, you, can, you should still call Social Security, ask them about Part A, but you don't have to get Part B until you stop employment, okay? But you've got to let them know that. Part A Medicare is free. It doesn't cost you anything. But Part B does have a premium associated with it. And this year, 2015, it's, it's $104.90. So that does have a, a, a premium associated with it. And to get back to that, uh, if you, in other words, if you're turning 65 in July, if you call Social Security in April, May, or June, your benefits would start on July 1st, okay? If you call in July, they're gonna start August 1st. If you call in August, it's gonna be, it's gonna be September 1st, and et cetera, et cetera. So you wanna be sure that you use that window, okay? And again, the Part B is a program that, uh, that is, is part of Medicare, but if you're working and you're covered by your employee group health plan, either through your employment or your spouse's employment, you can defer picking up the Part B. So, so that, that's good. And again, any questions you have of this nature, give us a call. Call the SHINE program and our counselors will be happy to sit down with you. Uh, especially if you're in a situation you're retiring or going on Medicare and you're still employed. We get folks calling, uh, calling recently that are 72, 75 years old and they've been covered by, by either themselves or their spouse's employment and, and they want to uh, they wanna pick up that Medicare Part B. So it's very important that you take advantage of that window uh, and, and if you do, what you do, you have a, you have a uh, you have an eight month window after you stop working to pick up Part B. Now after that, you can run into a bit of a problem because, uh, because you, could, uh, you could end up having to pay a penalty or something. So again, it's very important. You wanna call Shine to let us know exactly where you, know, where you are and if we can help you or, 
We want to be, help you go through that process because you don't want to be confused. It can become too important. And one thing I would like to clarify a little bit is that if you are retiring and um, at 65 and you have no other health insurance options, you're not going to continue working, you're actually going to get done, and again, you have no other health insurance options, you do want to pick up parts med of Medicare. You want to pick up A and B. Okay, It's very important because if you don't, two things could happen. One, you cannot buy insurance without both Medicare A and B. You just can't. Okay, it's, it's not allowable. And number two, if you don't pick up the B, you're going to get a big penalty. And then when you get the penalties, there's a lot more involved. There's only a certain window of which you can pick up B during the year, and then there's a lot of delay in when, when you can pick up buy insurance and that kind of thing. So it's important that if you're going to stop working, you don't have an employer group health plan, you want to pick up both A and B. Um, but if you hit 65 and you're going to continue to work, as Editor already said, you can pick up A. It's free. You know, if you've worked 10 years in your lifetime or 40 quarters, the A is free, and then you can wait to take the B. You don't have to take it because you're either covered by your own employer group health plan or you're covered by your spouse's employer group health plan. But I just want to make sure you're aware that if you get done working, you ought to be picking up A and B. It's really important. And another important part of, of Medicare is Medicare Part D, that's prescription drug plans. And that's a, 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 another part that, uh, again, when you, when you turn 65, uh, that you may, you may <coughs> want to look in, you need to look into because uh, you can get a prescription drug plan with either Part A or Part B. So if you don't have prescription coverage through an employer group health plan or uh, a uh, 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 retiree plan, you need to look at getting, uh, getting prescription drug coverage. Now, now that, that, can be, that can be obtained, again, at the same time you, you pick up your, uh, your Part A or your Part B. It's, it's recommended that you do that and, uh, and pick up a drug plan. You can do that by, by again, calling us. We'll send you a, uh, a, a prescription drug enrollment form that you can make out and send back to us. We can research the Medicare website to find a plan that meets your needs. There's, there's 27 different, different plans. They all have different premiums. They all cover different medications. And, and it's a little bit of a puzzle, to say the least. So, so we want to make sure that, that you get the right plan. The, 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 the warning on that is, is your neighbor's plan isn't going to work for you, most likely. Your husband's plan isn't going to work for you, most likely. So, so you want to be sure that, that, you know, drug plans are individual, completely individual. Everybody's drugs are different. Everybody's taking different medications. And the costs of these plans are different for everyone. So, so again, that's, that's something is the Part D program. And if you stop working, I just want to let you remind you also that with, with, with Part B, as I said, we said before, you have eight months to pick up a Part B program. With, with Part D, you have 63 days to pick up a drug plan. You don't have that eight months. So that comfort level isn't, you know, way out there. I mean, and to be honest with folks, if you're stopping work, your, your work coverage is probably going to end anyway. So you need to get some health coverage. Or you can have a COBRA option, but guess what? COBRA does not avoid a penalty. COBRA does not replace Part B. So, so you want to be aware of that. And COBRA can be very expensive. Cost you a lot of money where if, uh, if you're in a Part B plan, your costs are probably going to be a lot less than getting a COBRA plan. So, so again, tell your employer, yeah, thank you for the COBRA, but I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to make sure I call Medicare, uh, call, call uh, sh the SHINE program, so I can get some different details on stuff and see what will meet my financial needs uh, better than anything else. Anything else on Part D we can talk about, Carrie? Yeah, sometimes what happens is we'll get a phone call at the office and somebody's saying, you know, I'm planning and retiring. So I'm looking at retiring at, let's say, October. Let's say they're, they've come into my office right now, and they're looking at retiring in October. So they'll start asking me about, what's the timing? When should I be contacting the Social Security office? So there's a couple of things to consider, one of which is you ought to consider when you're going to retire, the actual date itself, because Medicare and its components always start on the first day of a month, always. That doesn't change. So if a person decides they're going to retire, let's say on 
October 5th, that's pretty much near the beginning of the month. And then more than likely a person's retiree health insurance is also going to end on October 5th. Well, Medicare either has to start on October 1st or it's going to have to start on November 1st. One of those two choices. So you might want to stop and think of, hmm, maybe I actually want to retire the last day of September and have my Medicare start October 1st, or I want my insurance with whom my employer to stop on the last day of October and have my Medicare start on the first day of November. So that's one thing you really want to figure out because otherwise you might spend some time during a month of which you have no health coverage. So that's not very good. So that's one thing to consider. The other thing to consider is when would you call the Social Security Administration? So again, as Ed has said, when you stop your employer group health plan, the federal government gives you eight months of which you can get into Medicare B, you can pick that up and then buy health insurance, and you have two months to pick up Medicare D, but you don't have to wait to do that. You can actually call the Social Security Administration. I would usually say the time frame I give is two months before the date that you want to retire and start that process ahead of time. And then that way on the date that you actually retire, um, then your Medicare can start the next day. So for example, if you want your Medicare to start October 1st, I would start the process of calling Social Security to start your B. I would start that back in August, just to give yourself some extra time. And why is that? Well, that is because if you're working, the Social Security Administration is going to end up having to send you a form that you would have to self-declare that you've had an employer group health plan. When you receive that form, you've got to bring it to your Human Resources Department. They've got to verify that you've had employer group health coverage, and that needs to be sent back into the Social Security Office, and then the Social Security Office processes your claim to start B. So that can take some time. So that's why you'd want to give yourself some time to kind of coordinate that as to when you would want to start your Medicare. But again, that's if you're working. So if you're working, pick, give yourself about two months prior to stopping work to when you would want to start contacting Social Security again and getting that process set up. And again, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news here, but but the, the situation with the Social Security rule is kind of clear that the, the, the concept is actively working, okay? You have to be actively working and covered by an employer group health plan. And, and once you stop actively working, that's the trigger. That's the trigger for that eight months, okay? So, so a lot of cases we've had folks call and say, well, okay, uh, I'm going to stop working on July 30th, but my employer is going to cover my health plan for another year. Well, guess what? Not necessarily good, okay, because uh, it's nice, but the end of eight months, you got to enroll in that Part B or you're going to be facing a penalty. So, so again, that trigger is, is actively working, okay, or loss of employer group health plan. But we, we don't want our folks, to, folks to get confused if again their employer may be covering them for a length of time and, and covering their, their, their health care and, and then they forget to sign up for Part B and then there's all kinds of repercussions that take place and there's not a lot you can do about it. So, so again, if you stop actively going to work, give us a call, explain the situation, we can do some paperwork for you, we can talk to you and talk it over to you and go over your options. But, but you need to remember that it's nice for your employer to be covering that health care for uh, an extensive period of time, going to save you some money, but you've got to also remember that eight-month period, you've got to remember that you're going to call Social Security maybe six months in to start your Part B, okay? You, you're going to have to pick up the Part B. Your employer can continue to cover your health care, but the key is you have to pick up the Part B and pay that, that premium, whatever it might be. So, so you need to remember that. It's, it's very important. We've had folks, uh, had that happen to folks, and uh, it's, it's not, not a good thing. You don't want to go there, okay? So, so again, Carrie, uh, what else can we talk about? What have been, we talked about deferred, what if you defer a Part D? We talked about that mm -hmm. a little bit, okay. So if you, if you decide that you want to um, 
keep, let's say your employer offers you a drug plan. Okay, so now your employer is saying, maybe you're going to stop working and they're going to continue with drug coverage. You can do that um, and you can do what's called deferring or you can wait to take Medicare Part D. One of the things you need to check on though is whether or not the coverage that your employer is going to give you is considered creditable. And again, that's an insurance term, we've talked about that before. Um, but creditable is a specific term, which means that that drug part of that insurance is as good as what Medicare can offer or better. And if that's the case, then you can substitute that Medicare Part D plan or the drug plan um, instead of taking one from Medicare. Um, so that is an option. But if you are getting done work, and it's along the same lines with Medicare B, which I just got done explaining, D also has some specific rules to it. So for example, if you have Medicare D, um, sorry, if you're going to get done with work, you only have two months now to pick up a Medicare drug plan. So you've got to pay attention to that. And it is, again, sort of a situation where Ed had said, if you're not sure which drug plan to call us, uh, which drug plan to use, please call us and we'll help you figure that out. And you can also get your drugs as part of a Medicare Advantage plan. So we can discuss, okay, what's a good option for you with insurance? So maybe, maybe a Medicare Advantage plan is a good option for you. Well, those many times come, come with drugs included with that. So that might be something we would want to look at too. So not just a D plan per se, but a Medicare Advantage plan with drugs. So you've got to be careful of when you start and stop your insurances and when you pick up the Medicare. And, but that's why you need to call us. So just remember some important dates, some important time frames. You get done work. You need to, on your drugs, you need to make a move within two months of losing your employment. Either you retire or you lose it. And you have eight months to pick up Medicare B. But again, bottom line is don't expect you to memorize all this stuff. Just call us and we'll help you through that and help you work it through. That's right, Carrie. And, and, and what we've done, we've uh, tried to make the process a little bit easier also. Uh, we've developed a little pamphlet that uh, that we send out to folks if they call us, and uh, we'll uh, you know we'll set up an appointment for you to talk to us, but and but we'll also send out a little uh, pamphlet in advance. We call it Turn It 65 or Going on Medicare, and and what it does, it explains all of this stuff we've talked to you about. Gets into the pros and cons of of different uh, different supplement plans that would help you. For instance, uh, Medicare supplement plans. Uh, Medigap policies, uh, Medicare Advantage plans, or Medicare health plans, Part D coverage, mm -hmm. prescription advantage, all of these components we've talked to you about during the year, but this, uh, this little three page sheet will, uh, three or four pages I think it is, will explain to you the gaps in Medicare. It gives you uh, a, a little bit of information. We like to think it's, uh, it's in English, it's easy to read, much better than uh, looking at the Medicare stuff. Uh, uh, that's, that's out there. And also, we like to refer you to uh, our website at uh, shinema.org, and you can log on there and get some information as well. And you can also view, uh, view our TV programs that were put on before if you, if you need any information. So, so again, it's, uh, it's good stuff, and uh, just give us a call. That's the important part of this whole pro all of this program. Give us a call so we can put you in the right direction we can set you up with a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, with a shine counselor at your local senior center. If you'd like to do that, you can go in and talk to them. They'd be up, very happy to spend an hour or so with you if you have the time to go over all of your options. So, so again, very important stuff. Uh, Carrie, anything else we can talk about? Any new news? Mm -hmm. New news. I can't think of I anything can else. think of can something. Think of we things? just okay. completed a training. Yes, we did just complete. How could I forget that? We just completed a, uh, a training for new shine counselors. And, and uh, Carrie, you want to talk about some of the folks? We did. I did one part. Carrie did the other part. But uh, maybe Carrie can talk about some of the folks. Sure. What we did, and I can't believe I forgot about this because um, I was a big part of the training. Um, what we did this year is mostly we had one individual that was a uh, volunteer from the community. <clears throat>
excuse me, but most of the individuals that we trained this year came out of the aging um, service access points, so ASAPs. So that would be agencies like Montachusetts Home Care, that would be Elder Services of Worcester, and that would be Tri-Valley Service, Elder Services. And we had staff come from those particular agencies and trained with us for uh, several weeks and are now certified CHIME counselors. So now they're going in the process of being mentored, so it's like they job shadow and they see what we do, and then they're gonna go back to their specific agencies and they're gonna help people that call into their agencies. So in those individuals were options counselors. And options counselors are, and it's a free service. Anybody can call them, anybody can call any one of those um, three agencies in our area and ask to speak to an options counselor. And that options counselor can talk with you about anything you might be concerned about. It could be, wow, I think I'm low income. Do I qualify for fuel assistance? Do you think I qualify for housing? Um, <clears throat> I think I need a home health aid. Um, how would I get that? Uh, qualifying for anything you have any question about. I didn't realize there were a fabulous resource in this regard. And they'll talk to you about that. They can send you materials. They can do home visits. If you don't want a home visit, they can meet you at a Dunkin' Donuts. They can meet you in any place that you want to be. And their services are not just available for people that are over 65. It's available for anybody. So you, you just call them up and say, I, I want to know what options are available to me and what services are available, and they'll help you out. So now they're partnering with us. So that's a really, really nice um, arrangement. We're excited to have them on board. Very bright people that we work with are all extremely smart, and we're really happy to have them on board. Very fortunate to have them with us. We are, and it's, 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 these folks are going to be able to do uh, do a lot of stuff that a shine counselor can't do, typically. But they've been trained again, as as, as Kerry said, to help with uh, to help with food stamps, fuel assistance, uh, uh, services for homemaking, okay, uh, housing, and, and and various services like that. That if if you go to the Shine Counselor, we're, we're going to say, Gee, you know, we don't know. It's not something we normally do. But these folks at the ASAPs, the Aging Service Access Points, and and uh, we have a slide there. We'll show you how to contact them. Uh, that uh, they'll be, uh, you'll be able to reach those folks and, and just call. What you want to do is give them a call, talk to the information and referral folks, explain the situation, tell them maybe you'd like to talk to an options counselor, and you can set something up. They'll go to you, hey, it's a great program. And we're, as Kerry said, we're very excited to be working mm -hmm. with them. When we're going to do a program, <clears throat> we're going to get somebody in uh, over the next couple of months to, to, to review that stuff with you. So, again, very excited. We're happy about it. And uh, time is running out, Kerry. What a great visit we've had, and happy to happy to have you with us, and look forward to seeing you uh, seeing you soon. Very much so. Say goodbye. Bye, everybody. See ya. Thanks for joining us.